You all already know the streamlining algorithm used to perform tractography in the MRI. This algorithm typically starts from a steep point and grows given a defined step length towards the main direction or a sampling of the main dire directions, if we are in probabilistic frameworks. This method, however, suffers from angular errors due to low SNR in diffusion and from the multiplicity of fibers stemming from a given point, as you can see on this illustration from Morrison et al. Fibers, moreover, grow independently from each other. So to address this limitation, the concept of global topography was introduced in 2000. This approach enables the inference of all fibers simultaneously through a global optimization process aiming to overcome the drawbacks I've just mentioned. It basically consists in spreading small particles called spinglass all over the brain. Spinglasses are characterized by their position, orientation, length and can establish connection one to each other to form small chains. The process begins with a pseudo-random initialization of the spinglasses and through an optimization process we sequentially modify the spinglasses one by one to minimize an energy function. The energy function is composed of two primary components, the data attachment energy term and the bending energy term. The data attachment energy term encourages the alignment of spins glass to match the fiber or retention distribution, while the bending energy term promotes to form a plausible connection between spin glasses. The algorithms use uh, many different operations on the spin glasses, including random motion, connection, deletion, and birth of new spin glasses. According to a Monte Carlo Markov chain property, this process is supposed to converge towards an optimal configuration that minimizes the energy at the end. You can find many articles in the literature that improve the mathematical models behind the global topography, like in Reisert and Christen's papers, are proving its high robustness to the ill-posed nature of the topography problem or its robustness to the limits of local modeling as well. One can easily embed any further anatomical or microstructural constraint thanks to the flexibility of the energy function, as in Tayak 2017. However, even if global tractography performs better, why is it still so rarely used? The answer is very simple, it's because it re requires a few hours to perform a single tractography, and because it's highly limited in terms of memory, Limiting the number of uh, spin glasses per voxel and hence the number of fibers we could get at the end. With today's emergence of HPC system, we need to highly parallelize this algorithm and tackle the time and memory bottlenecks. This will enable us to go beyond deep white matter bundles if we manage to get more spin glasses per voxel and process innovative imaging techniques such as uh, NITRI, FIDD MRI, PRI, SLI, OCT and X-ray scattering that have uh, scales from the meso to the microscopic scales. So this is the purpose of uh, the exact high soft software that we are currently developing in Neurospin. The basic idea is to parallelize the algorithm at two levels, two levels. First, at the level of the node of a supercomputer. We split the brain into as many partitions as we have nodes on the supercomputer and second, the level within a node itself. Each node is composed of several CPU cores, and we spread to CPU cores the task to perform, them as all the spin glass modifications that we need to do. Let's see the first parallelization step in more detail. Actually, we don't split the brain to Cartesian uh, partition, but rather an optimized partitioning thanks to uh, Metis frameworks. This optimization step aims to balance the workload between nodes and minimize the borders between regions. For example, if the brain is divided into four parts and deployed on a supercomputer with four nodes, we each node is assigned to a specific region and performs spin glasses modification within that region to converge at the end. A key challenge with this approach is that it lacks of global co coordination. To address this, uh, overlapping areas between nodes are defined to ensure continuity across the boundaries. We implement a communication protocol between nodes to exchange modifications that occur in these overlapping areas. 
Communication are synchronized at a predefined frequency, and the subsequent conflict correction step is performed to manage potential conflicts when merging the overlapping regions. If. The second parallelization level is set up to allow a large number of CPU cores to freely, randomly, and simultaneously perform modification on the same spin glass map. The strategy is inspired by Bastion control graph design to allow the merging of two concurrent modifications. We tested our algorithm on the Shenonson Brain dataset, an ex vivo 11.7 Tesla full human brain at 200 micrometer isotropic resolution. As you can see, we obtain a re really fine level of detail on sex to the combination of both high resolution and global photography. We managed to tackle the general bias by finding very nice sharp turns in the jury without adding any anatomical constraint. This result were obtained in a, in a one hour computation on 20 nodes with each 128 CPU cores, meaning around 2500 CPU cores globally. We additionally performed some scalability tests scalability test to evaluate the algorithm behavior on large datasets. The test involved measuring the time to perform the same number of operations on the subsequent communication for both the full Shenonso dataset represented by the yellow curve, and the subset of it, represented by the green curve. The result demonstrates that the algorithm scaled well with increasing data set size. As expected, the larger the data set, the more the algorithm benefits from improved, improved communication to computation time ratios. In progression, we spent less time to uh, communicate than uh, com computations. Let's now compare the time requir required for full photography using different setups. With a conventional computer performing in vivo DMRI at uh, 1.2 mm resolution, would typically take around 45 minutes, which is aligning with existing global photography literature, like in MRTX or uh, MIT. By using a 20 node HPC cluster, the computation time can be reduced to approximately one minute, which is nearly equivalent to the time required for a conventional streamlining algorithm. For higher resolution imaging at 200 micrometers, we cannot use conventional computer because of memory stuff. However, when operating a 20 node HPC cluster, the processing time can be achieved in around one hour, and if we um, go to a large, larger data, uh, larger uh, supercomputer with 500 nodes, the computation can be further reduced to uh, just a few minutes. Regarding PLI, estimated computation, computation times indicate that it would take approximately 10 hours to complete from isotropic ODF at uh, five uh, at 50 micrometers. In conclusion, the exact hack software introduced a highly parallelized approach to, uh, for global photography. We took advantage of high performance computing uh, facilities to significantly reduce computing time and address memory constraints. Scalability tests have demonstrated its uh, efficiency on large datasets, while the application of Xatrack to the Chenonso Brain uh, datasets show its ability to obtain fine detail and overcome some biases. The code can be uh, is fully available on uh, Framagit at the following, following link. And to go one step further, we plan to parallelize the algorithm on the uh, hybrid CPU and GPU architecture in order to benefit from all the 2D plane information that we have in 3D PLI. So I'd like to thank my colleague from uh, Neurospin and uh, Yulish.